noble Aaron El Shabazz. Um, I have a couple of questions. One, do all city employees sign into work on a roll call duty sheet of some sort? There's no, there's no time clock no uh, duty sheet. Okay, so how do you determine whether employees were in attendance that day for work or whether they weren't? Where's the process? Their supervisor checks on, on everybody who comes in. So there's no record of whether an employee was at work or not? Is that what they're saying? It's supervisor signs off. I'm not sure it's every week or every other week. And it's a sign off of there. And we have who was there at the work. So what is the name of that actual record that they must put the supervisor signs off? The time sheet. The time sheet? It's a time sheet. I fill one out on the two weeks. That, that's the name of the record? Of time, uh, that's that's the what they, time sheet? That's, that's the form that they utilize to record the, the employee yes, attendance I, time sheet. I, I understand, but I need to know the exact name of that government record. I, I can produce one, that, uh, an empty one, that just, it should be, you have to put your name, your uh, supervisor's name, the days for that time period, and then you're signing it at the bottom. Okay. So we will give you a copy of, if you have a yes, class one, I have one copy. Okay, great, thank you. Um, now that includes all city employees, correct? Is that the process for all city employees, or there's uh, different procedures for I'm not exactly sure on how each one does that. Everybody has the time sheet. Everybody has the time sheet, so you can go to personnel. I'm sorry, let me be a little more clear than maybe. I'm saying, say, uh, um, municipal judges, municipal prosecutors, those are city employees. Is it documented when they show up for work? And do they sign the same type of sheets that any other city employees sign? We don't, do you have that answer? We'll find out we don't have that answer, Mr. Shabazz. Okay, do, do so you I know what I'll be able to get the answer by? Mr. Hamilton, um, when, sorry, can, we get, um, when can, can he get an answer to how, what is the process for municipal judges, for prosecutors in terms of attendance? I'll, I'll, I'll try and find out tomorrow. Okay, so we'll have to wait till the next council meeting, or you will I be able to contact you, or if, how will this work? If you present the information, yeah. I could forward to Mr. Ross. I'll give it to the council president, she can set it up. Thank you. And I look forward to you. Thank you very much. Um, second question, pursuant to the protocols, was the hearing of Mr. McDougal audio recorded? No. No. Um, could the council please explain why, for the second time in a row, a hearing review was not audio recorded. Mr. Gaden or Mr. Hamilton, who would like to answer that question? Mr. Gaden, there was a court report. There was a court so report there. there I understand that, but the protocols clearly state that it will be audio recording and that audio recording will then be forwarded to the police director. So that's in violation of the protocols for the second time. The first time it happened, I was told it was because I was allowed some extra step to bring a videographer and record. There was no videographer brought this time. There was no special request made. So why weren't the protocols followed? What does the protocol state, Mr. Hamilton? No, that, that looks like you did it wrong. We'll check it out. Okay. No, I have the protocols here. So, 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 so do you want to see the protocols? It states we, what I'm telling you it states. I know it that's, why, that's, that's why um, and as, I'm asking him that he that's right, so they like violated them. He's saying it looks like it. It doesn't look like it. They violated the protocols for the second time in a row. Why? He's saying it was court. It was a stenographer present, and a transcript was produced. That is what the judge asked to do, and we decided to do it that way. So they so violated the so protocols. Are, that is the answer. That, that's that's so. Is and you can ask it three more times. That is the answer. The judge and I, that's what we decided to do, and the transcript was produced to Mr. Uh, McDougal. Now, what I would like to ask the council is, since the protocols clearly state that it's supposed to be audio recorded, and since the city attorney slash pretend community liaison just emphatically, rudely made it clear that they violated, they don't care that they violated, they did what they wanted to do. 
Yes. What will be the disciplinary action taken for them violating the code? Mr. Anderson, you have something to say? I don't think she's a pretend, so just a point of order. So, I mean, that's your opinion. I'm, I, right now, I'm speaking, I'm giving my opinion. I think she's a pretend. We just, um, he was just um, making sure that that's, um, to clarify, that's a point of order. Uh, Mr. Hamilton, we need to move. We have a whole lot of things that when these two cases are over, you all have indicated on a number of occasions, and I think it's absolutely correct to do it, to look at the procedures to see if they need to be changed or tightened or followed more closely. And that's what I think you promised to do. Uh, we'll certainly cooperate with that. Uh, that wasn't the question I asked. I, I will, uh, you asked how to, you know, what it will be the... I'm the saying she issues. clearly violated the protocols and made it clear that she doesn't care. The attitude demonstrated is an, is an unprofessional, arrogant, rude attitude where I violated it and so what? So I want to know what is the council going to do as far as taking disciplinary action for the violation, the clear, deliberate, willful violation. Ms. Gaten works for me. I'm her superior. I saw nothing rude. I saw nothing uh, out of order to work. Uh, I'll talk to her about the fact that there was no what? Other than that, nothing's going to happen. I just, and, and, and I appreciate exactly. that. My I, I appreciate that, that, that you will talk to Ms. Gaten. And I don't think she was rude. She was just, you know, pointing. In, she was just in, in her answer. But what I will tell you is that, um, and I, I, I don't feel comfortable by the fact that if that's what the procedure says, that we did not do it. The reason is the decision that she made. I don't know. I would like to talk to her later on about it and see. But as it is, as what is presented here, I personally don't. Um, we need to follow the procedure. That's what we've been saying from the from the get go. And Council President, she also said that the judge was a part of that decision. That's what I'm saying, both of them. And I would like to know why that was done. Okay. It, exactly. Exactly. The hearing officer was part of violating the protocol. So he's just supporting my position that they deliberately, both of them in concert, act together to violate the protocols, which essentially, ultimately, serve to undermine the hearing review process. Mm -hmm. what, what I will say to you, Mr. Shabazz, I don't know if it was deliberately or not. I, must, I don't think that, it, I, I just want to hear. Two cases in a row, Ms. Escobar. Come on, Council President. I see, That's deliberate. I want to see why, what happened. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, it's a minute and so, so, so that we... A, a minute and so. Okay, well, points regarding the, the hearing process is the hearing process is a very simple process. I demonstrated that the last time that I was here. I read from uh, Hearing Officer Hoffman's own scope of review, his own hearing report, where he said he's not supposed to do an investigation. That's not the, his scope. That's not his purpose. To further support that, I have my hearing transcripts. And at the end of the hearing transcripts, I asked him. He says to me, all right, I think I understand your points. Now, do you have any questions you want to ask me? I said, well, could you please explain the process to me now? What happens next? He goes on to say, the process next, as I understand it, is in 10 business days, I'll get the transcript, I will view it, and then I will inform you of my decision. That's the process in a nutshell. You see how simple that is? He gets the transcripts in 10 business days, and then he will review it and inform us of his decision. It doesn't take months, yet mine took three months to finally get a decision, and now Mr. McDougal's is going on about three months. He's violating the process. They just admitted it. Ms. Gayton just admitted it that they violate the process, and they make their own decisions to violate it at will. So we're going to have to do something about this, but to, to sum it up, I filed a formal complaint for unethical conduct against Ms. Gayden as well as Mr. Hoffman. Did the council receive it? I emailed it to council president and councilman Flynn. I just as well as I believe. Uh, uh, Mr. Charles, to time yourself, I just want to acknowledge that we did receive it. I wasn't able to open it for some reason. My computer will not allow me to open it. What's well, okay? I have a hard copy here for you right now. Man, I hand it to someone. And uh, and um. Just about the transcript. The, one of the reasons the judge asked for the transcript is that so that when he is reviewing the test, the testimony, he can have a hard 
hard copy right there in front of him so that he can review and go back and see what was said by him, what was said by a witness, what was said by Mr. Shabazz. That is what we do in, in a court proceeding, rather than having to rewind and go back and look for a specific thing. So he thought it better to have a transcript, a court reporter there, so that we could have a hard copy. There was no deliberate attempt to violate anything, but to make the process, the process better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Points. Uh, just, points just, as far, just as far as my uh, complaint, I want to know what will be the next steps taken. I formed a formal Please, complaint for my next so, 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 Mr. Um, Hamilton. He complained to put the wrong body. Well, what is the right way? He's going to tell you right now, Mr. Yes, ma'am. Complaints of violations of the city's ethics ordinance go to the ethics board. The ethics board. Can you please provide me with the address to this ethics board? Because I'm not familiar with this ethics Lisa, board. Mr. Therese is right here. Right, Mr. Therese? Just, Mr. just bring it to my office. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tellas. I'm here for an update from the last time I was here. So I don't need to waste my five minutes saying everything I've been saying for weeks and months and two years now. I, I, I did after the, the last meeting, I met with Mr. Hamilton. Mm -hmm. I expressed um, a, have some questions about what was raised here. And that's why when he said that he's, we got to look and see, um, and even what I heard today. So. I still, there's still some things that, that we continue, and I did, um, I, I have expressed my concerns to Mr. Hamilton about the process. Okay, um, Mr. McDougall still hasn't heard anything. Uh, it was my understanding that he was sent to Mr. Hamilton, Mr. McDougall, mm -hmm. did he? Uh, I, I, my understanding is going out this week, I don't know if it's actually gone out yet. Yeah. There was any because I, I follow up also. Mm -hmm. That was one of the questions. And Mr. Bating is not here to ask her, but <coughs> I understand that why she's not here. She not here. I think that she had, why she left Mr. Hamilton. She looked at me and indicated she liked to leave, and we didn't have anything more than had to be addressed. Okay. Well, I don't think that you know whether or not, you know, she knows we're here. If she sees me and she sees my husband, she knows we're here mainly for her role as a community liaison. So to look at Mr. Hamilton and get the okay to leave when we haven't left, I don't have any major issue right now except for her and Mr. Hoffman and this process that's failing us miserably. And we come here every two weeks, every third week, and we get nothing, and we still have nothing. My husband made the point that Ms. Ms. Gaden clearly stated that Mr. Hamilton basically made a decision even though it went against the protocol, he made a decision. Judge, Judge well, Judge he's no longer a judge, and he's a, hear, a hearing officer, correct? Right? Right. Yes. right. So, Mr. Hoffman, and I think that's how he signed the report. I don't think he signed the report. I'm sorry, Mr. Hoffman. I'm sorry. We're not getting anywhere. And she clearly stated that he made a decision to, to do one thing instead of follow the protocol which is a violation. Mr. Hamilton said he's her supervisor. Nothing's going to happen. That is the MO in the city of New Brunswick. You do wrong, nothing happens. She did, if he did something wrong, he'd be held accountable for it. You know, the, the, he asked how the workers are monitored as far as pay. Oh, the supervisor fills out a timesheet. But when I come through the city of New Brunswick, they clock me from the time I get in, I'm paying until I leave this council meeting. But you don't keep track of your own employees. You can't put an electronic clock to clock if they actually work. Like There's just so many things today alone that I'm hearing that shows in the city of New Brunswick, they don't care. My husband was riding through New Brunswick when all this happened. He was investigated on the side of the road, but his background was checked while on the side of the road. But And I'm all for second chances, don't get me wrong. You know, if somebody's, you know, 25 years and living their life, you know, they made a mistake and they move forward, I have no problem with that. I actually commend somebody for changing their ways. But, you know, New Brunswick does everything to everybody else but their own. And, that, and we want answers. I'm going to come to the next council meeting, and I hope that by then, you know, you have some answers. 
Uh, Mr. Hamilton said that they only had two people that requested the hearing, and after these two, then you guys are going to, I guess, readjust some things. But in the in the meantime, we need some results now. It's, it doesn't make any sense that now Mr. McDougal is still waiting to, to hear from Internal Affairs. What Ms. Gaines said on your record, that the investigation was reopened and that Mr. Hoffman did give the recommendation. Five weeks now, and we haven't, and he hasn't heard from uh, the Internal Affairs Unit at all. Thank That's you. unacceptable. Well, we'll take Tom, do you want to say anything? Oh, excuse me. Um, Mr. Hamilton, I left my email address with you at the last meeting with Charlie, and I still didn't get that information. I don't know why I gave it to, I gave it to you, my secretary. I, 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 I sent out the citation. It was uh, you gave it on that 40, 14, 150, 48, 14, 155, and I, and I sent it out and ready, and, and put a note on it, I was only doing it the one time, so I clearly remember doing it. You said 48, you just said 14, 155, are there any dots in between this anywhere? 40, A, colon, 14, dash, 155. 40, A, colon, dash, no, 14. 40A colon 14-155. I'm sorry, you were speaking to him. Thank you. Oh, Mary, I know she's bad. Someone said. Um, I know the, the mayor take, uh, takes on an honorific title, refers to himself as the Honorable Mayor Kate. Um Municipal magistrates take on honorific title referring to themselves as the Honorable Judge such and such. Um, an honorific title such as the Honorable so-and-so is a very important title. It's not just supposed to be some empty formality that people take on. It's supposed to mean that you're really honorable. I saw a form the last meeting that I was at where I guess an organization presented something to the council and they referred to every member on this council as the Honorable Rebecca Escobar, the Honorable Glenn Fleming, so on and so forth. Now, what I would like to point out is the only thing that qualifies someone to refer to themselves as honorable is good moral character. And good moral character, the foundation of good moral character is honesty. Honesty is the root of the word honorable. You cannot be honorable if you are not honest. To be honorable, one must be honest. Clear cut. Dishonesty disqualifies one from being worthy of being called honorable. Now, the point I am making is I'm not calling anyone on the council dishonorable. What I am stating is to be honorable, you must be honest. So what I'm saying is I know that I have proven to you she has violated the protocols. Therefore, if you are honest, there is no way you cannot recognize and admit that she is dead wrong, her and Mr. Hall. So if you are really honorable, then you must be honest and acknowledge that, admit it, and then part of being honest is to also then take steps to correct the problem. And taking steps to correct the problem is not allowing the head attorney to make excuses for his underling and to cover and protect her and say nothing's going to happen to her. The community liaison office, he's not her boss when it comes to being a community liaison officer. He's her boss when it comes to being a city attorney. She's an assistant city attorney and a community liaison officer. He may have authority over her as a, an assistant city attorney. He has no authority over her as a community liaison officer. The council established the community liaison office. Therefore, the council has all authority to discipline her as the community liaison Mayor officer. Mayor Cahill established it. Mayor Cahill. And then, if they had to approve it, they're part of establishing it. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. And, Ms. and Council President Escobar has already told me before, she has the power, the council has the power to make changes and corrections because they have authority over her in that position. 
So, I don't have to address some ethics board over her violating the protocols of this particular office. The council has the ability to take disciplinary against her for violating her office as the community liaison officer. And I am respectfully requesting that you take disciplinary action against her. I've proven to you she's been dishonest. So she is standing right now in dishonor. I've proven she was dishonest. I sent videos to Council President Escobar and, Cal and, and uh, Councilman Fleming, and I know in the video I put a compilation together of every, of, not every, but at multiple council meetings that I've been, and I've showed you where she contradicted herself. I clearly proved to you she lied with the council's own videos of each meeting. And to further, to further, if you want me to further prove it, I got audio of meetings that I had with her, and I recorded her, and I can show you I got more lies. Now, if the community liaison officer lies, I proved to you she lies. You saw the video, so you know she lied. If you are really honorable, you will be honest and admit, I saw the video, she lied. And I don't need you to say that right now. You can say that amongst yourselves later on. But your silence, to me, is an answer. You saw the videos, and the videos prove she's a liar. She deliberately lied to me, and when a council, when a when a when a officer, a city employee who holds an office lies, that is an act of unethical conduct. When you willfully lie to a complainant about the hearing process, about the hearing reports, about talking to Mr. Hoffman, when you deliberately keep all the secret and only reveal it when you, council president, put the pressure on her finally and made her answer some questions, only then did she finally tell the truth. So she had been lying to me all along. The evidence is on video. There's no denying it. He can't protect her from that. So, since he can't protect her from the evidence that I've already presented to you, that I got all over YouTube so the public sees it, you are now on the spot to have to prove your honor. Are you going to be honest and take use your power as the council who has the authority to discipline the community liaison officer? Are you going to discipline her for blatantly lying to me, which is indeed an act of dishonest honesty, deliberate dishonesty? which constitutes unethical conduct by any standards. And in front of all, let me just say this and I'm done. Ethics and law are two different things. For one, for, for an individual can be dishonest, unprincipled, untrustworthy, unfair, deceitful, and lying without breaking the written law. But ethical people measure their professional and personal conduct by fundamental ethical principles rather than by written statutes, legislation, codes, and institutional rules, right? Honesty is the key of honor. Okay. She is dishonest. I've proven it. I am now requesting that you take disciplinary action. I've done it formally in my complaint anyway, but I put, do, do you want to hear the evidence that I have on, on, on this audio? Or was the video enough? Uh, I couldn't really look at it. I couldn't watch the video, but I've heard, and you know, we have met before, and I've heard some of the-, the You heard the, some of the audio, right? So I know that. Uh, I just want to point out, point well taken, I hear you, and um, time is up, actually. I gave you yes, ma'am. Just you, do the right thing, thing on you, this. Mr. <laughs> Good evening once again, Charles Pratt of Bill.